Oh hi, Taryn here again. So I'm super excited because today's video is one, a bonus video for my channel, and two, it is part of a huge collaboration with 24, that's right, 24 YouTube channels, which is just insane, and I'm just so thankful to be a part of it. It is a hundred dollar challenge. That means we get a piece and all the things that we use on it have to be under a hundred dollars or a hundred dollars or less, somewhere around there. So from drop cloth to top coat, this piece cost me $84.29. And it is the fanciest piece I have ever done and I'm very excited about it. Uh, so if you guys want to see how to do this and uh, check out all the other YouTubers that were involved. There will be a playlist. You guys can go through them all. It's incredible. Just let's keep on watching. Okay, so this is the piece that I chose. It was $20 and that is a lot for me because I typically get my pieces for free. So I'm already in the whole 20, but this is a really awesome dresser. So I'm pretty all right with it. It did have some surface damage, some pretty deep scratches in the top and some of the drawers were sticking. We're gonna fix that. When I go over things, I'm gonna give you kind of like an idea of the prices as I'm going through. And then at the end, there will be an actual list with everything broken down that you can see if you're one of those people that really like the numbers. So here I'm just going through the drawers and figuring out where they're sticking at because that's how you fix them. You figure out where the problem is and then you can either sand it down or find some other way to help them slide more smoothly. So on this one in particular, I knew that it was the upper right side that was sticking. Um, the drawer fronts are veneered, so it's actually easier to sand down the inside of the frame. That way I'm not potentially damaging any of the veneer. And then I'm going to be using some of this TSP. You literally use so, such a small amount of this stuff that it's like pennies really, but I kind of, rounded up for all of this stuff. So the scouring pad, I got a ton of stuff from the dollar store just so that if somebody's just starting out, that is a great place to start because you will find a lot of products there. So scouring pad and all my rags, all from the dollar store. So I'm just going over this whole piece with the TSP. And then once you're finished with TSP, you do have to rinse it with water. So have a bucket or something the like next to you that you can rinse it off and go through this. Um, I also recommend these little scrub brushes. They're in like the tool section of the dollar store. Yeah, this is the plastic one. It comes in a pack of three and it really gets into the details and gets everything all cleaned out for you. So I'm going to remove this hardware. I'm leaving the hardware as is. So all I'm gonna do to it is clean it. Just nothing crazy there. Just some of the TSP and I used one of the scrubby brushes on those. I didn't show it because that's boring. As you can see, I keep all my hardware in that little container there so I don't lose them later. So this whole piece took me two sheets of sandpaper. That's it. Uh, just because I'm giving it a scuff sand and that's all that it needed with the exception of around the drawer frames just to keep it from sticking. So I'm just going on wiping back all the sanding dust after that. And then I'm going to go in with this Durham's putty this stuff is incredible it is so inexpensive but man does it work and I, it's become one of my fast favorites so this is going to fill in the deep deep scratch that was on the top of this and then any other scratches gouges you know this thing has lived a life so it's seen some things all i'm doing is dropping it on with the spoon and then i take my scraper and wipe it back because the less you have on there the less you have to sand later so yeah um, and I just, I went a little bit crazy because typically if I wanted to use more sandpaper or bust out the stripper, if I had, you know, more money to spend, I would have done that, <laughs> but I didn't. So fill away we did. And then these drop cloths also at the dollar store, super awesome. The roller and tray from the dollar store. And that is really great to use for primer because you're just going to toss the roller anyways. So the primer I used hardly any because it only took one coat. This actually wasn't a crazy bleeding piece, which is a miracle. I'm not sure how that didn't happen, but so anyway, since the drawers were already pretty tight, I went over with just a damp cloth and wiped back any of the primer that got 
in between because I didn't want that to get messed up. And then I save my tray and the roller inside a plastic bag to keep them wet in case I have to do another coat. And then I'm going over all of the water putty now because it's all dry. It dries so fast. Um, same with the sanding block and just cleaning all that up. Okay, this is Hemp Wax from Chalk Mountain. And oh man, I use this stuff, I think, on every single piece that I do. So I'm using it around all the drawers because, like I said, I was having some sticking issues and none of these drawers stick anymore. So with a little bit of sanding and some of the Hemp Wax, they just glide beautifully now. So you put it on all the tracks and also the inside of the drawers, it like revives them and just nourishes the wood and makes it look so pretty. Uh, these are my favorite and very inexpensive brushes that you can get. They're synthetic. They clean really easily. They are about $6. And then I'm using my Chalk Mountain Poly. And we are going to decoupage the front of this. So I just did a whole video on this. So I'm not going to go too much into it because you can watch my last video if you want to figure out how I get my papers, how I create them because I make these myself, and then how to apply them. So... I can't have a 40 minute video, but this is what it looks like. And then from there, I knew that I was doing this based off of that image. So I chose colors that kind of are complementary to it. And that's how I did the entire piece based off that one image. And then to add a little texture, I'm taking some anaglypto wallpaper and I'm just filling out the lower frame. Cause you know, if the top's fancy, the bottom has to be fancy too. It's got to even out there. So this is almost the same process as doing the papers above. However, because it's a textured wallpaper, you have to use quite a bit more poly. You can be a little more rough with it because it's less fragile, but you can't use a brayer with it because you don't want to squish down the prints. And this looks super crazy. I know, just so crazy, super bubbly and just awful. I promise it's really not that hard to work with. It just, it looks bad before it looks good, if you know what I mean. So I'm just kind of working with it now. Essentially, I was using the poly to get it on there and stick it so that I can get it to fit in the frame. I'm not one of those people who will measure and cut it out and try and get it on and then try and get it to lay perfectly with the poly because I feel like there will be gaps and all kinds of stuff. So for me, it's easier to get it on and then cut it out while it's in frame. And then because this paper is so thick and durable, I can actually lift and apply more poly and re-stick it down and then it just looks nearly perfect by the time I'm finished. And just so long as you kind of do things gingerly, see some of the paper came up from the backing there, not worried about it. It's gonna go right back down like it never happened. And this stuff is fully paintable, so you don't have to worry about the color or anything like that. We're gonna paint this into the piece and it's gonna be lovely. Now you do wanna make sure that you're adding extra stuff around the edges so that nothing lifts. Okay, here's the fun part. This is the base coat. The base coat is kind of this mellow, this is called Mellow White from Chalk Mountain. I'm a Chalk Mountain brand ambassador, so I use all of their things because their stuff just rocks. And so Mellow White and Medium Khaki, these are the two base colors that I use for the whole piece because it is the most prominent two colors on the print. So that's what I want all over the piece. And then everything else will kind of just be softly blended in. And as you can see, since the print in the center has been sealed with poly because that's what I apply the papers with, if I get paint on it, I can literally just wipe it right off like it never happened. So I am going to be painting this into the piece, but it's nice knowing that if you make a mistake, you can just wipe it off and it's not going to mess up your print at all. So my blending technique is so simple. It's literally just going back and forth with your colors. I'm not somebody who's terribly worried about mixing paints and everything like that. I... I just, I feel like there's not enough time in the day to be too concerned about that kind of stuff. So my brushes go back and forth in each color. When I feel like I need to mix the blue more into something, I use the blue brush. When I feel like I need more khaki into it, I mix the khaki into the blue. And you know what? Some of the blue gets on the khaki brush and that's just what happens. Um, if you're somebody who doesn't like that, you can use an extra brush that you keep cleaning off 
and you can keep your pots of paint separate. Uh, I just, I don't have that in me. So this is how I do it. And I really like the way it turns out. I'm never sad. <laughs> so do what you want. But anyway, so as you can see, I'm just taking the colors and kind, kind of lining them up with a print, how I think they look kind of pleasing to my eye. I'm not sure I can say kind of more than I already did, but we'll try it out. So the right side of the print is darker than the left side of the print. So obviously the left side of the dresser is going to be slightly lighter than the right side of the dresser, if that makes sense. You're just kind of using the colors and working with the print as you're going around. And you can kind of move things around and do it to your liking, but at least you have a base of something to work with. And it's literally just kind of round and round swirls back and forth. I'm not too worried about going over everything because this is kind of a almost a cloudy mottled look. So it's a smooth blend, but it's super, super easy. Instead of trying to do like a full on gradient, these are very small areas that I'm working in. If you work in larger areas, it gets a little more difficult, but these are very small areas and it's pretty easy to keep everything super blended and nice. Now, my shop is a little bit hot right now because it's summertime, so I'm using a lot of water and I'm really not afraid of using water. So this is built up in two coats and I realized that it doesn't look like it because you've been watching me do a one whole scene of this, but it's actually, this is my second coat now going over the top of these. And then now that I kind of know my placement of my colors and it's been on the second coat, I can take similar colors and go over the drawer frame. Like I said before, I didn't do the primer around the drawer because I didn't want there to be any more sticking because they were a tight fit, but obviously I have to paint through there. So the paint's fine. It's thin enough. The drawers are still totally okay. There might be some scuffs or something later on down the road because people use them, but it's to be expected. And I just kind of get close with the colors here. And as you can see, I'm using the rag to wipe off anything that drops down below because it's obviously not part of the blend, but you're just kind of making it not look crazy when you open the drawers. And then of course I'm giving everything just a light sand and this is just brushing over. I'm not doing any deep sanding here. Now I'm just using some tape to do some metallic stripes on these drawer frames. The other two frames had something in them, so more is more, right? <laughs> These ones needed something too. And I can't do a piece without using gilding wax because it brings me joy. So I'm obviously using my antique gold rub and buff. It's the one I almost always go to. I just, I love it. I think because I typically choose cool toned paints, then I like a warmer gilding wax to kind of offset everything. But I'm literally just using my finger. You use so, so little of this. It's insane. But it just has the best effect ever. And so I do the rub and buff for the stripes. I'm reusing the tape. We're talking like pennies here of the amount of tape that I used. And the same for rub and buff. But then I also use the rub and buff to go around all the frames, all the details everywhere. And I'm telling you I didn't even use an eighth of that tiny little container I don't know what little tube squeezy tube that's it then I'm taking my poly and doing the entire piece that's what we're sealing it with is it's chalk mountain satin poly And now we're adding on hardware. This is such a gratifying part. I love adding the hardware. I feel like it's when you finally put on jewelry and you're like, oh, now I'm fancy. I wasn't before, but now that I have earrings on, I'm there. And see, as you can see, just a cleaning on those shined them up just so well. Okay, this is a piece of paper bag. 
it does such a light, light sand over the top of your first coat of poly, but it takes down anything that may have got stuck in it or anything like that. And it works so awesome without scraping off any of your coats. So paper bag trick, use it. It's awesome. Um, and then I was adding a lot of water because like I said, my shop is really hot. But this is a finished piece. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you learned something. Um, again, I will have all the numbers for you at the end of this. I kept meticulous notes, so they're, they're all written down. And hello to any new subscribers out there. That's so awesome. I'm so thankful to be a part of this. And yeah, that's it. There will be an outro coming up soon. So you'll see my face again, which isn't typical for me. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, it's just lovely. I'm so thankful to be a part of it. And I did want to give a big shout out to Richard for buying me my first coffee, which I just think is so cool. And he made mention that I should probably start linking things down below in my videos for you guys to be able to do. So I started doing that all because of Richard. So thank you again, Richard, so much. And there will be links to everything that I can down below to get your hands on all this stuff. I also want to mention when totaling this out, I only used, so like the two most used colors in this paint job was mellow white. And so I marked it here and I've only used this much of it and then about the same amount on the khaki. So it's marked there and I've only used this much of it. I used even less of the other colors because they were just extra add-ons. And so, this entire dresser took less than one of these containers of paint. So you can do more than one dresser, and this is a large piece, and one of these. So I only added up the amount that that would have been. That's not true. I gave you the total of one of these, even though you actually use less of this. I added in the total of this whole thing. But for my poly, hold on. I added the total of an entire bottle minus a third because I only used uh, two thirds on this entire piece. Anyways, I hope that makes sense. So um, the 84.29 is just the amount of things that I use. However, I did include the price of four paintbrushes. So that's four paintbrushes for the entire thing because I used four different colors to blend everything together, deep clean them and do the top coat. Um, obviously, if this is your first time, you're probably not going to do something like this. However, if it is your, you know, fifth time, 20th time, you probably already have brushes on hand and you don't need to do that. But if you're starting out brand new, fresh, you have literally nothing, nothing. The whole total of everything, and I mean everything, from the drop cloth that I use, the rollers, the paint, like everything. If you were to buy the full amounts, and my primer is a gallon jug, uh, that would cost you one, about $180. And that's if you had nothing. That's buying a piece for $20, depending. Um, and then a gallon of primer, full container of paint, full poly, full wax, full everything. Like if you had literally nothing on hand. So there's that $180 all in for everything. But I only counted what I already used because I always have feature tape on hand, drop cloths on hand. I already had paint brushes. I already have, you know, I've got all stuff. So, and I think that's typically where most people are. So you could totally do a piece under $100. Easy peasy. Lemon squeezy. All right. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you enjoy watching everyone else's videos. Again, everything will be linked down below. And I will see you guys on Tuesday.